Brothers and sisters, I do welcome you today. Let us come to the God of our journey, bringing the best of all we are and all we have, not even comparing ourselves with others, but rejoicing that we are one in Christ and that God delights to bless us with the unit that comes from his heart and that we can fill our hearts. If we open our hearts to God's truth and mystery, we want to hear what God wants us today. Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you as we are gathered in this space, as we listen to your word. You help us to grow in understanding as we offer our prayer. You help us to grow in fellowship. As we learn how to live out our faith, you help us to grow in maturity that we may be your witness in the world today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would call my brother Ben to come and do the reading of the word of God coming from the letter of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 5 to 15. Okay, let's hear the word of God. Good morning and God bless and another exciting Sunday where we get to come and uh, hear the message uh, from Johnson and his, um, his word from God for the week. Uh, a couple of weeks ago I said pray for the COVID people so I uh, encourage you to keep praying for those in lockdown and um, even if you know people with COVID make sure you say a prayer for them and um, last, last week I went to a church meeting and we uh, all got a, a massive serving about just praying when we can also be doing something about it and um, expecting God to do it where he actually expects us to do it so if we're praying and can also uh, go out and um, help people. Well, I encourage you to do that as well. But uh, this week, um, the scripture verse is from 1 Corinthians 3, 5 to 15. So what after all is Apollos, and what after all, what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God made it grow. So no, neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The man who plants and the man who waters has one purpose, and each will be rewarded according to his own labour. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, you are God's field, God's building. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay or straw, his works will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each man's works. If what he has built survives, he will receive his reward. If it is burned up, he will suffer loss. Him, him, he himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. And this is the word of the Lord. Praise God. What, a, what an amazing verse. So, Get Johnson back to share his message for this week. Can't wait. Come with open ears. Thanks, Johnson. <clears throat> the one who plants and the one who waters work together with the same purpose. And both will be rewarded for their own hard work. For we are both God's workers. And you are God's field. You are God's building. I think everyone who has ever gone to school, be it high school, be it primary school, college, graduate, uh, you know that there are two ways that can turn your stomach into a crystal and make your mouth as dry as cotton. Shoot your blood pressure through the roof and send your sweat glands into a public. Those two ways are the ways final exam. I will never forget the final exams I had taken in my life. My first one was in primary school when I was doing 
grade 7 and we're supposed to write exam after primary final exam that word only has got a message that I will never forget later reading the text we are going to preach on today I'm going to preach on today I was reminded that I still have one final exam to go this is a unique final exam. You cannot start for it. You cannot claim for it. The reason is you take this exam every day. So, you are taking it right now. That is, if you are a follower of Christ, if you are a believer from the moment you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, you begin to take this exam. You are never going to know your grade until the end of time. Only Jesus can grade this exam because only Jesus Christ knows the right answers and no one else. There is one other difference with this exam. You can fail the exam without flunking out of school. This exam does not concern salvation. It concerns service. Christians face a totally different type of judgment than non-Christians. Non-Christians are going to be judged for one sin. And that is the sin of refusing to believe in Jesus Christ and receive him as Lord and Savior. Christians have already had their sins forgiven because they've received Jesus Christ. That is why the Bible says in Romans 8 verse 1, there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Jesus Christ. What God has done for us has taken care of our sin. But what we do for God still requires God's evaluation. One day we are going to have to take one final exam before the professor of the universe. Here is what we are going to find. God is going to review the way we lived. So the Bible compares life to a building. Every day you are literally building a life. Every day and every deed is another brick that you put into that building. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 10 says, According to the grace of God which was given to me, like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation, and another is building on it. But each man must be careful how he builds on it. That is what Paul is saying. So the word for master builder is a Greek word that gives us the English word architect. You are the architect of your life. You can build your life anywhere you choose. You can build it in air with any materials that you choose. But when any building is finished, it has to pass code and it always must be approved by the building inspector. Who knows what buildings are? So everyone starts out with the same foundation. That is what we are told in this book. Verse 11 says, For no man can lay any foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So, Jesus Christ is the foundation and the chief cornerstone of your life. So the good news is that since you have already got a perfect foundation, you can build an outstanding life if you use the right materials. Because the foundation is already there. That is why we go on to read, Now if any man builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each man's work will become evident one day. Every day you are building a life either of what which will last or that which won't last. Either your life is being built with permanent materials or perishable materials. Eternal materials or inferior materials? Worth materials or worthless materials? You will know in an instant what kind of life you build because verse 13 says, each man's work will become evident. For the day will show because it will be revealed with fire. And the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. On verse 13 of 1 Corinthians chapter 3. So your life is going to be placed on a pedestal. The way you spend your time, the way you spend your money, 
the priorities you place in your life will all be put on a pedestal. So God's fire of evaluation is going to follow you. And if you build your life on permanent materials, you will receive a reward. That is what the Bible says. If you build a life made of perishable materials, you will lose your reward. So there are only two things. Receiving a reward or lose a reward. So the day that Paul is referring to in verse 18 is the day when Jesus returns. This is the day Jesus himself referred to in Revelation 22, verse 12. See, I am coming soon, and my reward is with me to repay all according to their deeds. Can you see what is the verse saying in Revelation 22, verse 12? So now there will be no favorites. No plea bargaining, no bribing of the judge. We are all going to be reviewed exactly the same way. It will be a fair judgment because Jesus himself will be doing the judgment. John 5 verse 22 says, For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son. So it is only the Son who is going to judge us on the things that we have done. There will be no exemptions, no exceptions, no excuses for this judgment. I know there are a lot of Christians who would just like to sneak into heaven. They are not really even interested in rewards. They just soon as skip the review, but everybody has to take this final exam. You have to take the final exam. I don't mind telling you for some time, for some, it is going to be a very embarrassing exam. But we all must take it because 2 Corinthians 5, 10 says, sooner or later, we'll all have to face God regardless of our conditions. We'll appear before Christ and take what is coming to us as a result of actions, either good or bad. Sooner or later, we'll face our judgment day. No income tax would be has ever been examined as closely as the RISS, your life is going to be examined by Jesus Christ. I want you to think about something that hopefully will encourage you and inspire to, you to live every minute for God's glory. God is concerned with every minute of your life. Verse 18 says, but there is going to come a time of testing at the judgment day to see what kind of work each builder has done. Isn't that important? To see what kind of work each builder has done in verse 18. It is not what size of work you have done, but what sort of work you have done. God is not looking for quantity. He is looking for quality. It is not just what you do for the Lord, but how you do what you do for the Lord. And even more important, why you do what you do for the Lord. That is what is important. So one chapter later, in chapter 4 of First Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 5, Paul said, So be careful not to jump to conclusions before the Lord returns as to whether or not someone is faithful. When the Lord comes, you will bring our deepest secrets to light and will reveal our private motives. And then God will give to everyone whatever praise is due. So it has nothing to do with us to judge other people. Because God, Jesus himself, is going to do it. Has it ever occurred to you that you can do the right thing the right way, at the right place, at the right time? So if you do it for the wrong reason, you lose your reward for doing it. If you give money to the church just to get off your taxes, God is not going to reward that. If you come to church just to get your needs met, not because you want to help meet someone else's needs, God is not going to reward that. Whenever you do anything that you would call a good deed, Make sure that it passes the glory test. What do I mean by that? Simply this. In 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31 says, So eat your meal heartily, not worrying about what others say about what you are eating, to God's glory. After all, not to please them. 
As a matter of fact, do everything that way, hardly or freely to God's glory. Which means whatever you are doing, you are doing it to the glory of God. You are not doing it to please people. No. Refuse to please people. Do it to please God in the first place. It is dental if you will live by that principle, it will save you a lot of heartache and grief and keep you from a lot of sin. Because anything you can do to the glory of God, you shouldn't do it. If anything that you do doesn't please God, doesn't give glory to God, stop. Do only the thing that gives glory to God. God is going to reward the work we do. The Bible is very specific that any work we do, God deems worth it. Done for the right reason, in the right way, is going to be rewarded. That is what the Bible says. So this is where Christianity passed away with every other religion concerning doing good deeds. Every other religion in the world is that good deeds take you to heaven. This is not what Christianity teaches. We do not believe that good works take you to heaven. No, we don't believe that. We do believe that good deeds follow you to heaven. <laughs> because the Revelation 14, 13 says, Blessed are those who die in the Lord from now on they are blessed indeed, for they will rest from all their toils and trials, for their good deeds will follow them. So your good deeds will follow you. They don't make you enter into heaven. They will follow you. So do not mi mistake salvation for rewards. Salvation depends upon Christ's work for us. Rewards depend upon works for Christ. Verse 8 says, Each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. Verse 8. So don't let that pass you by. If each of us has our own reward to receive, that means each one of us has our own work to do. I'm not going to be rewarded for your labor. And you are not going to be rewarded for my labor. That's mine. You shouldn't be concerned with my reward, or I should be concerned with your reward. Sometimes people are worried about what the other person is doing. You should not be worried about what the person is. We are each going to receive our own reward according to our own labor. That is where there is no room for jealous for God's children. There is no room for jealous in God's kingdom. And no need for jealous among Christians. Because each person is going to be rewarded according to your own labor. Not according to someone else. So no Christian should ever be jealous of another Christian. No church should ever be jealous of another church. No denomination should ever be jealous of another denomination. We are each to do our own work for which we each is going to receive our own reward according to what we are doing. Keep in mind, we are going to be rewarded according to our labor. Not according to our success. Not according to our results. But according to our labor. How we serve God. In other words, a word you would substitute there would be faithful. I am going to receive my reward according to my faithfulness to the Lord. That is why a pastor of a small church who is faithful in all that he could do may receive a far greater reward than a pastor of a big church who wasn't nearly as faithful in his own personal life. So it's not about success, it's about how you do it. The way God is going to evaluate you is this. He is not going to evaluate you on what you did do. But what you did do compared to what you could have done. There is a story about a lady named Mary in the Gospel of Mark. Who comes to the Lord Jesus before he was going to die. She takes a bottle of very expensive oil and breaks it and pours it over his head. She was criticized by one of the disciples very sharply for wasting any, that expensive oil. That particular disciple said she could have sold that oil and gave it to the poor. I want you to listen to what Jesus replied on Mark 14 verse 8. She did what she could. When she could, she pre-anointed my body for the burial. Can you see that? That is the real question that Jesus is going to ask all of us when our life is over. 
Did you do what you could have done when you could have done it? Some people have more ability than others. Some people have more money than others. Some people have more gifts than others. If you were simply judged according to what you did or what you gave, that would be unfair. Because some can do more than others and some can give more than others. That is why Jesus said in Luke 12 verse 48, much is required for those to whom much is given. And much is more required from those to whom much more is given. So, because you've been given more, you are expected more. So, there is fairness in everything. I'm absolutely convinced that one thing is going to be true for the vast majority of us who are believers. That is, when we stand before God, we are going to be shocked at what we did for God compared to what we would have done for God. What more would we have done? One of the greatest Christians who ever walked the face of this is what do it, do it like Moody. Moody made this statement the world is yet to see what God can do with one man or one man totally committed and surrendered to Him. That is what is God expecting us. Rest assured of one thing any work you do, great or small, God deems worthy, will receive a reward. It is very simple. If the work survives the fire, that builder will receive a reward. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 13. It says if the work survives the fire, that builder will receive a reward. That is why you ought to make sure you do whatever you do for God. Because it doesn't matter whether anyone sees it, knows it, or hears about it. It doesn't matter. Anyone says, yes, you've done a good thing or praises you, or compliments you, you continue to do the right thing. It is irrelevant whether it is ever makes the newspaper, or the radio, the television, or the internet. If God sees it and God hears it, God will remember it and God will reward it. That is what God is saying. So, we are going to regret any waste we left. Verse 15 paints an incredible picture. But if it, the work of our life is destroyed by fire, we will lose everything. Ooh. If it is going to be destroyed by fire, we will lose everything. Yet we ourselves will be saved like someone escaping from flames. This is the picture of the believer, the follower of Christ, who gets into heaven literally by the skin of his teeth. It is like a man whose house catches on fire, who has no time to gather any belongings, any mentors, anything of value. He simply leaps out the window, having lost everything except his own life. That is the way many Christians are going to go into heaven. Empty-handed with nothing to show for their life. What have you done when you were there? What have you done when you were down on earth? What did you do that counts, that will follow you when you are gone? I read a story of one of the greatest named men uh, named Charles Jones. His middle name was Tremendous. Because of all the great things he was able to accomplish in his life. He tells the story of walking down to his basement after the flood had left its damage. So the water receded and he had left thick mud and gang almost waist deep. His basement was where he kept all his awards, plugs and honors. They were all standing under about four feet of mud. He said he was standing there feeling sorry for himself, hardly believing what had happened when God spoke to him and said, Charlie, remember two things. Number one, you are not as tremendous as people say you are. Number two, don't worry about all this. I was going to burn it all up anyway. I've seen people with so many degrees still hanging on their walls and they are gone. What's going to happen? They are going to be burnt anyway. So all the qualifications we have on paper, they are all going to be burnt anyway when we are gone. So, many of you have heard this little poem. 
Some of you have memorized it, but a lot of you don't know it. You will never hear true words than this. Listen, you have only one life. It will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. When you take that final exam, as we all are going to do, I hope and pray that you will hear Jesus say to you, Well done, good and faithful servant. Well done, good and faithful servant. Then we'll know you have passed with flying colors. Isn't that great, brothers and sisters? When we will take our final exam. All the exams you are doing are not the final ones. I just want to remind you that all the exams you are worried about, they are not the final ones. The final exam is coming. Will you pass it as well? May God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Let us pray. Loving Father, thank you for the privilege of being used in the world as witness of the Lord Jesus Christ and to do the work that you have already prepared for me to do and to do the work that you have prepared for us all. Root out all that is of us. Replace it with the sweat nature of the Lord Jesus Christ as we carry out the work that you have prepared for us to do in the power of the Holy Spirit. Help us, Father. Thank you that your already loved Son has laid aside his glory to become man so that he could give us his sinless life and bring many sons into glory by faith in him. Thank you that Jesus is the rock of our salvation and the foundation stone upon which our faith is founded. Keep us looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our life, whose name I pray. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, it's time again. I would remind you to take your offering and just thank God. It's always good to say thank you, Lord. After hearing the message, it's always good for you to say thank you, God. We thank God for a lot of things. Just look behind. Only, I don't want you to, to look for the whole year. Just look only for this week. What has happened in your life? What are the things that you want to say thank you, Lord? Can you give a testimony of what God has done to you? Only this week. Only these seven days. I don't want you to go back long. Only these seven days. What has God done to you? And that we need to say, thank you, Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for your love, for the things that you have done to us, especially this week. We come before you. We thank you, Lord. May you continue to bless us, Father. Show us your love. Show us who you are. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ especially the gift of life, even if you fail to see other things, we can say, thank you, Lord, but the gift of life, that I am still alive. When I open the TV and see what is happening in other countries, I am really thankful, Lord. Thank you, Lord, I am still alive. God bless these offerings. Amen. May we receive grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen.